Hello everyone, I am Fairuz Khan and today I'm back with another day, I'm back with another class. Today I have business studies at Excel AS. We were doing chapter 26, forms of business, um, if, you, if you still remember, and, and we did uh, partnership, we did uh, sole trader, the basic forms of businesses, the basic companies that you can uh, structure out as you're starting. So yeah, um, I hope you can hear me properly. I hope you can see me properly. If you have any problem, do not hesitate to type and let us know. Um, I will start the class in a minute. Let's wait for some students to join. In the meanwhile, if you like our lectures, if you like our classes, do not hesitate to sign up or like our page uh, on Facebook. Just type in Firos Education Services. We also have a YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want. Again, again, type Firos Education Services, right? So let's get on with it. We have some viewers um, and, and uh, Zavir, hi. Renuma, if you're here, just type yes so that I know you're here. So let's start. Um, let's see what we have today. Um, Okay, <laughs> nice. So it's a picture of me with a mask on. And why do I have this picture here? I think um, it was back in April or May, I went to a grocery store to buy some groceries, uh, you know, to buy some things that I needed. Um, and I had this mask on and I took this picture intentionally because things have changed. Until March, things were very different. Our social life, the way now businesses are, are conducted, everything has changed because of COVID-19, because of this deadly and dangerous disease. Um, I never wore a mask before COVID-19, before, uh, I mean, when I had to go out uh, shopping or for a business meeting, but the environment has changed. And that also has led me uh, in thinking um, different things because businesses were shut down. We had problems. Businesses couldn't pay rent. They made workers redundant. And there were a lot of other issues that happened that took place that occurred because of COVID-19. And that led me in thinking of the future. And I thought of, um, you know, uh, in this instance, in this scenario, we should open up, we should open up, uh, you know, other businesses or we should invest in some other things like IT. Because when you're staying home, the future is going to be IT because everybody is going to conduct meetings. Uh, we teachers, we will conduct classes and do everything on the internet, on the web. So IT is a good solution. Then think of Cloud Kitchen. Sorry, there's a mistake. Cloud Kitchen. Okay, so ordering food from home, takeaways. So I thought of these two, three kinds of businesses and I thought of investing on them that, you know, for the future, I feel I should invest in these kind of businesses because these are the future. Uh, because COVID is not going to go away. It's going to be there for the next two, three years. So why not invest in some of these businesses? And let me tell you, I already have an IT company. So, but then I have uh, FES. I'm always busy with FES. I don't have much time. So I thought of, you know, I will invest with a partner. I will find a partner or partners. Uh, I will invest and they will take care of it. I won't take the responsibility. Okay, I will invest my money, but my partners will take on the responsibility. I'll be like a sleeping partner. Sleeping partner um, is a term that was that's not used now, but it was used in the olden days. Sleeping partner means you're not an active partner. You've just invested your money. OK, so I'm thinking of that because I won't have responsibility because I already have enough on my plate. Uh, yes, I, I do have classes every day. I do have to look after FES. So why not just invest on an IT company or a cloud kitchen takeaway delivery service? I will not have any kind of responsibility. And this kind of uh, business partnership is known as limited partnership, means you are just an investor and you don't have any responsibility. You have just invested in the business and that is known as limited partnership. 
Okay, so you've just invested in the business. You have no responsibility in the operations. And and um, so, yeah, so limited partnership means you provide capital, you provide money, but you don't take part in the management. Okay, so that is limited partnership. And that also means you will have limited liability, limited responsibility. If there's a problem with the business, you don't have to pay from your own pocket. Okay. Um, so it has a separate legal identity. But yes, if the business makes losses, you will lose money. That's there. Okay. So, but but the good thing is that it has limited liability. If something goes wrong, you don't have to sell your assets. You don't have to sell sell your house or cars or pay from your own savings. Okay. So that is limited partnership means you've invested in the business, but but you don't take part in the management. You don't take part in operations, uh, right? You're a sleeping partner. You're a dormant partner, okay? Um, so you're not an active partner. So that is limited partnership. Um, but other partners, other people, other partners with you will have unlimited liability. They, because someone needs to take responsibility, yes? So they will have an unlimited liability and you can take up to 20 partners, okay? But however, there are a number of regulations. So we have sole trader, we have partnerships, we also have limited partnerships and we've spoken about it. You invest money, but you don't take responsibility. In that case, you have unlimited, uh, you have, in that case, you have limited liability, okay? But other partners will have to take unlimited liability, right? If you have any questions, do not hesitate to type in here. So that's limited partnership. And then we come to limited companies. Now, we've talked about that we're going to a different segment. Uh, we're going to more important things that we need to study in the chapter. So we've talked about sole trader. We've talked about partnership. We've talked about limited partnership. These are basic. These are um, you know unincorporated business. They don't have separate legal identity. Okay, uh, where business and owners are the same, but limited companies, they are different. And I gave you this example even in the last class. So, you know, I have this IT company called Firos Dashboard Private Limited. There we go. It's a private limited company. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to study about public limited company in this chapter. PLC, public limited, will be in the next chapter. So Firos Dashboard Private Limited, is a, is a company, it's a private limited company. And in these kind of companies, you will see this name, private limited or PVT limited. It is an incorporated business. It has a separate legal identity means, let's say this, I'm the owner and this is the business. These two are separate, they are parallel. If the business goes through a loss, okay? If, if a business has a problem, this will not affect me. I am a separate entity as a as an owner. Uh, it will uh, it will not harm my assets. It will not harm my personal savings. So we are separate. It's a separate legal identity. The paid up capital because when you start a business, you need to have a paid up capital. Okay, how much money you are going to invest initially? Our paid up capital is one crore, and it's a standard amount in terms of the Bangladeshi business environment. Okay, now. Um, Paid up capital is one crore. Okay, how many shares have been issued? Uh, under one crore, 100,000 shares, number of shares. And each share is 100. So if you multiply 100 into 100,000, it'll be one crore. Okay, so the total amount is one crore. How many shares, number of shares, 100,000. And what is the value per share, 100? All these will be mentioned in your trade license, in your deed of agreement. So it's very important to know these things. So when you form a private limited company, you will have paid up capital. You will have number of shares, how many shares are issued and what is the value per share. Now it'll be distributed amongst, amongst the owners and shareholders. So I am the managing director. Uh, out of 100,000, I have 50,000 shares. I have majority of them, which is worth 50 lakhs or 50%. Nabila Mahmood is the chairperson. She has 30,000 shares, second highest, uh, which means it's worth 30 lakhs or you can say 30%. Taib has 
10,000 shares, which is worth 10 lakhs of 10%, and others, there are other directors or shareholders who has, again, 10,000 worth 10 lakhs or 10%, okay? And a private limited company, guys, it has a board. Chairperson will lead it. So Nabila Mahmoud will be the chairperson of the board. I will be the MD. Uh, then you will have directors, shareholders. And this company will be ruled. This company will be run by this board. All the decisions will be taken by this board. Very important. Okay. And I'm telling you in terms of the recent laws, the recent regulations, and I'm telling you everything. Some of the things are not even given in the book, like number of shares per share. So these are very practical stuff. Okay. Um, and there, there will be annual general meeting, this one. Look at this, at the last, annual general meeting, AGM. Ask your father if they work for banks, if they work for different companies. So AGM is a meeting where all the shareholders will meet. They'll talk about their products, their company, their services. Uh, they will take decisions. They will share dividends, AGM. So this is the structure of a private limited company. Now, why is it called private limited company? It's called private because I'm the owner. Nabila Mahmood is my wife. Taib is my brother. And possibly other directors or shareholders can also be my friends and family. So for a private limited company, I can sell shares to my family and friends. I can transfer it privately. Public, which we'll do it next chapter. Public means you can sell it to anyone. Anyone. You can sell the shares to the general public. But that's the main difference between private and public. Private, you can only sell the shares to your family and friends within your reach privately. Okay. But public, you can sell shares to anyone. Okay. So you will have paid up capital, number of shares per share. This is how it's going to be distributed. Okay. And, and you will have a board and then you have AGM, right? So, so a limited company has a separate legal identity, I told you, okay? The business will be different. The owners will be different. This means uh, our assets, um, our personal savings is separated from the business. Uh, you can sue people, okay? And you can also be sued. So it's a high risk, right? And how do you how do you uh, raise money? You can raise money by selling shares. So let's say after three years, I feel let's say I feel uh, I don't want to have fifty thousand shares. Let me sell five thousand or ten thousand shares. I can sell it, but I can I can't sell it to a general public. I have to sell it to a family, friends, and I have to take Nabila's times and other directors' permission. Otherwise, otherwise I can't sell it. Okay, um, and there we go. And and you know, the value per share may increase, may decrease in the future. It may be 150 taka after three years. It may also be 70 taka. I don't know. It depends on the market. Okay, uh, so capital money is raised by selling shares. I can sell my shares. The Bila Mahmud can share sell shares. Taib Khan can also sell his shares and raise money. Okay, now this value may go up and may go down. And, and the money, the amount that you will get will depend on this value, per share value. Currently, the, the value per share is 100, but it may be 120 in the future. It may be 200. It may be, I don't know, 50. The more it is, the better it is, right? Okay, so if you feel that this, this uh, value per share has gone up to 150 and it's really, if it's a good amount, you can sell some shares to raise money, to raise capital, okay? Uh, and, and it's good. Let's say you, you need money to expand your business. So you can sell some of your shares, but you can sell shares privately to family and friends, and you have to take permission from other shareholders, okay? And of course, decisions are taken by the voting system, right? Okay, you have to vote, so that's there. Um, Okay, and, and I told you how it's run. I've told you everything. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's run by a board. The board will have directors. I told you the board will have directors. I will be there. It will be headed by a chairperson and there will be shareholders. And these board will take decisions. Directors can be voted out. 
okay, uh, in an AGM. So that's how it is done. And uh, you have to pay a corporation tax. For sole trader, for partnership, you have to pay tax on profit. The amount that you make on profit, you have to pay profit. Tax on profit for sole trader and partnership. For limited companies, you have to pay corporation tax. Okay. As for example, let me, let me, uh, you know, let me, for example, Firus Khan. Okay. I am the managing director of Firus Dashboard Private Limited. I will pay my personal tax. That's there. But on top of that, I also have to pay a corporation tax because I am the managing director or CEO of this company. So in limited companies, you need to pay a corporation tax, company tax. Uh, remember that. Now, if you have any questions, please do let us know, Zavi, Renuma, and others. Just type in on the comment section. Now, how do you form a limited company? There is a bit of hassle, a legal hassle, and you need two main documents. These are the two main documents. Memorandum of Association articles of association okay so let's see what is memorandum memorandum of association i've written basic it contains basic rules and and you know um uh, basic information like in memorandum of association you'll have name of the company you'll have address of the company you'll have objectives of the company and amount of capital to be raised and the number of shares so you will have these information Name of the company, your address, what is your paid up capital, one crore, how many shares, 100,000 shares per share, what is the value, 100. So these information you will have in articles of association, memorandum of association, sorry. You will have these information in memorandum of association. And in articles of association, you will have what are your rights as a shareholder, what can you do and what you cannot do. Now, if you want to appoint directors, what is the procedure? What is the process? A director, how for how long they can remain or they can serve as a director? For how long? Two years, three years? Because you can't be director in a private limited company or a public limited company for 10 years. You can be for two, three years, and then again, there will be re-election. Each month, how many meetings are you going to have? One, two? Now, if you want to audit, how are you going to do, do the arrangements? All this information, more detailed information, I would say, or more complex information will be in articles of association, right? So if you want to form a private limited company, uh, it, it is a bit of a hassle. You will have more paperwork in Bangladesh. If you want to form a private limited company, the leg the cost of legal paperwork is around 70,000 to 1 lakh taka. Okay, it's also expensive, but if you want to register it as a sole trader or partnership, you can do it in 10,000 only. Okay, so there's more money, there's more time involved, and you need more, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's more uh, complex. So, so you need two, two documents, memorandum of association, which is more basic. You will have name of the company, you will have address of the company objectives and amount of capital to be raised, number of shares, value of shares, and articles of association, you'll have rights of shareholders, procedure of appointing directors, how do you appoint directors, for how long they can be, they can serve as a director, okay, um, timing of meetings and arrangement for auditing companies. If you have any questions, please uh, type down in the comment section, we're doing well. So in private limited companies, you can have a small company, you can have a medium-sized company. We did it in the last class, right? It can be a small farm company, farming company. It can be an IT company. It can be, um, uh, it can be a restaurant, okay? And you will have this name. It'll end with limited or LTD. Like, for example, in Firus Dashboard, we have Firus Dashboard Private Limited, or the short form is PVT. So end of the name, you will have that, uh, right? And as I told you, the condition is, now, let's say I have I have a private limited company, Firus Dashboard. Now, I cannot sell it to you because I don't know uh, you. I'm, you're, uh, you, know, you, you, you don't belong to my family or circle of friends. So I cannot transfer the shares privately to you so because you fall under the category of the general public, 
right? So there you go. And other shareholders need to agree on the transfer. Now, if I want to sell my shares to you, I need permission from the Bila. I need permission from Taib or and other shareholders or directors. Otherwise, I cannot sell it to you. Okay, that's the biggest difference with a private and a public limited company. Private limited company, you have to sell it. You can only sell shares to family and friends. Public limited company, you can sell it to anyone. Okay, when you sell your shares, you get money, right? And usually private limit, limited companies are owned by family, family businesses, you know, old, old style restaurants. It can be a small textile industry, medium sized garments industries. OK. And, and these shareholders, these family, they're involved in running the business. Right. OK. So private lim limited companies, they, they can be found in the small sector, in the medium sized sector and uh, even in large, very, very large businesses. And it can be all forms of all kinds of businesses. OK. Now, the advantages are the advantages are you have limited liability. It's separate, as I told you. Business is separate. Your personal assets are separate. You are you don't take full responsibility. Your responsibility is limited. Okay, which is good in a way. And then you can sell your shares. Let's say you need money, so you can sell your shares and raise capital. Okay, uh, you have more control over the business, and you have tax advantages because in corporation tax you pay some kind of less tax. And private limited, as I told you before, it has more status than sole trader, partnership, or limited partnership. It's more acceptable internationally, okay, and everywhere. So these are the advantages of private limited company, and you must know them. Uh, you've also done this in O levels, uh, so this shouldn't be a problem to you. So limited liability, limited responsibility. You don't take full responsibility. You can raise more money, okay, by selling your shares if you want. Uh, all of all of a sudden, there may be an emergency issue, or you need money. Uh, you can have more control over the business because you know private limited company is owned by family, and when you have family businesses, you can control the company. Even if you have less shares, you can control the company because you belong to the family. You have tax advantages. And it has more higher status. It's, it's incorporated businesses. But however, the problem is you have to publish your information. Uh, you know, you have to send your information to the government. You have to do audit auditing. So all your personal financial information will be seen by a third party, by government agencies. So that's a problem. Also, when you set up private limited companies, I told you, uh, you know, a license, trade license, a dolil, egula korte, shottur hachar ek lakh taka chola jai. Yes, I did it. It took me around one lakh. It's a, it's quite expensive. Okay, so setting up costs has to be made, and then since you're three, four partners, you have to share your profits. And then if you want to transfer your shares, it takes time. Again, there's a very big legal process. Let's say you want to transfer your shares, you want to sell your shares. And in order to change the paperwork, again, it's a hassle. It takes a lot of time. And you cannot raise a lot of money compared to public limited companies because you can only sell your shares in private limited. You can only sell shares to friends and family. But for public limited company, uh, the opportunity is more, okay? The opportunity is endless. You can sell it to anyone you like, uh, okay? Let's go ahead. And if you have any questions regarding private limited company, let me know. Otherwise, we'll go ahead. We're doing quite well. Next up is, oh, okay. Um, everybody, I, I'm sure everybody knows this symbol, this logo. So McDonald's, I'm a great fan of McDonald's. Uh, when I studied abroad or when I travel, I usually go to McDonald's. Why? Because it's reliable, because it's affordable, cheap. You can have it on the go. And I really like the burgers and fries. Um, so McDonald's is an international brand. And let me tell you, McDonald's was the first one, okay, uh, to introduce this fast food method, uh, this, this system 
you stand, you order your food, you get your food in two, three minutes, you pay it up front. There will be no plates. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the food will be packed uh, in a in a in a in a in a brown wrapping in a uh, in a in a one time wrapping, and you take that burger anywhere. Uh, you know, you can eat that burger on a railway station, and in your car, in your office. Um, and and this 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 structure was actually created by McDonald's. There's this movie called The Founder. Uh, you should watch. It's a story of McDonald's, right? Uh, the story is a bit heartbreaking, but but it's it's quite good. So McDonald's uh, is a pioneer in this industry, and um, you know some of my friends, uh, some of my family re relatives, they were thinking of uh, bringing uh, the franchise uh, in Bangladesh. So McDonald's is a franchiser now. If you want to bring uh, so if you want to bring McDonald's to Bangladesh, you have to contact the franchiser. So McDonald's is the franchiser, right? Uh, and if you open a branch in Bangladesh, let's say this is a branch in Bangladesh, they will be known as franchisee. Like you have an employer, a company, and if they employ you, you're the employee. So if, uh, in order to bring the franchisee into Bangladesh, you have to contact the franchiser. The head office is in um, America. So McDonald's is the franchiser. And when you bring a branch to Bangladesh, that's a franchisee. So we have a KFC franchisee, right? We have a Nando's franchisee. Now, if you want to bring franchise, if you want to bring a franchise in Bangladesh, you need a license from McDonald's. You need the permission, okay? You need a license from them. Uh, and then they will agree to let you use their brand name, their logo, their color scheme. It'll be an exact business, um, uh, you know, what they have established in America. You can use all their trading operations, all the branding logo, uh, even the store layout, how the store looks. Have you been to KFC and, and, and Nando's in Bangladesh? Um, KFC and Nando's exactly looks the same wherever you go, all around the world because they need to have a consistent image. So even the store layout, how a store looks in America, that will also be the same in Brazil or India. So even the store layout will be the same. They will help you with marketing, okay, how to market the products and services. They will help you with equipments if you need, uh, you know, food equipments to make the products. Okay, they will help you with materials, supplies. Because there are some quality issues because McDonald's is a very, very well brand known, uh, very well uh, known brand name, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a remarkable brand. So they will not compromise with the quality. They will have a certain standard and therefore they will tell you that you need to buy your supplies from here. Okay, uh, they will tell you. So, so materials, supplies, even training, employee training. Uh, they will do the employee training in America, as far as I know. And they will also agree, Not let's say you have opened McDonald's in Bonani Road 11. Now, Bonani Road 11 is very famous for fast food uh, stores. You have Pizza Hut. You have a lot of uh, restaurants and cafes out there. Now, if you have one store in McDonald's in Bonani Road 11, uh, so McDonald's will promise not to open another branch, another franchisee in Road 11. Because do that branch tackle a problem, right? sales come If you have two branches, your sales may come down. They may jeopardize their business. Yes? So they will agree not to open another branch in that road because you already have one branch. But, but sometimes you may have two, three branches in one road. I remember Zara, it's a, it's a uh, you know, clothing store. They have around two or three branches in London, Oxford Street, Ekta Street, a Tinta store. If it's busy, if that want and need is there, then of course you can open two, three branches. But then you should always start with one because if you open too many branches, uh, the sales will be jeopardized. Okay? So... There we go. So, so that's that's a franchiser and franchisee. Now, if you want to get all these help from the franchiser, what do you need to do as a franchisee? As a franchisee, 
you need to pay a startup fee. If you want to get license and brand name, logo, color, scheme, store layout, help from marketing equi equipments, materials, if you want all those help, if you want to bring McDonald's in Bangladesh, you need to pay a startup fee. And it can be a lot. It can be three crores. It can be four crores. Then you need to pay a percentage of sales. Let's say every month your sales is 20 lakhs. You need to pay a percentage from there. You also need to pay a percentage from profit. You're paying a percentage from sales and then sales means all together sales. And then you also need to pay a percentage from your profit. Okay. And there may be one of cost, uh, you know, marketing cost and this cost and that cost. So when you want to bring a franchisee, a, fr a franchise, these are the things as a franchisee you have to do. You have to pay a startup fee. You need to pay a percentage of sales. You need to pay a profit. And of course, you also need to take one off cost. Okay. And in return, the franchiser in America, in this case, McDonald's, We'll give you the license, we'll give you brand name, logo, color, color scheme, store layout, marketing and advertising help, equipments, materials, supplies, training, and they will also not agree to open another store. Okay? So, so, uh, so there we go. And it's always good to open a franchise. Uh, tell me what's the difference. Let's say I want to open my own, own restaurant. And I want to bring a franchise like McDonald's. What is the difference? Now, if I open my own restaurant, it's a startup. Failing of startup is very high. The risk is very high. But if I get McDonald's, the risk is very low. Because McDonald's is a very well-known brand internationally. Everybody knows it, right? They have a brand name. Everybody knows their logo, knows their color. Everybody knows what kind of food they're selling. They have been here for the longest time, I think 70, 80 years. So, so the risk is very, very low. But the problem is when you get a franchisee, uh, the problem is it's a fee gula pay the high startup fee, percentage of sales, percentage from, from profit. Your overall sales may, may be one crore, but then they will say, see your profit. Let's say your profit is 20 lakhs. They will also take a percentage from there. Okay. And there may be other additional costs as well. That is the problem. Okay, but then, but then the risk of failing is very few, is 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 very less, I would say. Okay, it's it's minimum, um, right? We've talked about that about this. They'll give you a license. They'll give you a brand name. You can use their logo, color. Uh, they'll give you a startup package, help, advice, equipment. They may find the bank even to lend you money. Okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. And they will uh, help you with materials, with supplies, right? They'll provide you marketing support, ongoing training. Yes. Um, so exclusive area contracts, they will tell you since you've opened up in Bonani, we'll not open another branch in Bonani. If, or you, if you open in Gulshan or Dhanmundi, they will not open another branch in Gulshan or Dhanmundi because that may affect your sales. Okay, that may affect your business. So, yeah, and in return, I told you, as a franchisee, you have to pay a fee, okay? A percentage, percentage of sales, you have to make profit on the supplies and one of costs, one of fees, okay? So, yeah, these are the things that we've talked about. So, so far, so far from previous classes, we've talked about sole trader and partnership and limited partnership. These three are unincorporated business. Write it down. They do not have a separate legal identity. They have low status. Write it down. Okay. Limited companies, incorporated business, they have a separate legal identity. The owners of the business are different. Okay. Um, private and public limited companies. I have highlighted public because we'll do public limited company in the next chapter, not on this chapter. Okay, and then we've also spoken about franchise today, right? We'll stop here. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to comment on the comment section. We had a wonderful class. Um, uh, so these things are quite important. Uh, if you have any questions, write it down and I will answer to your questions. I will take your leave. Do not hesitate to like our Facebook page. 
Firos Education Services. Uh, also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, type in Firos Education Services. Great. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next class.